Hey, what's up YouTube? Today I'm going to talk to you guys about transistors, which are a basic component that you're going to need to be using for many of your little inventions that you use for your BeagleBone. So, I'm going to go ahead and refer to the BeagleBone as BB on the circuitry diagram. The first thing you need to know is that for any output, the maximum current is 250 milliamps. Uh, that's not much. You can't do much with that other than light up like a small LED, which sucks. You want to light up mortars and make them do special cool things, you're going to need a transistor. So let's go ahead and start off with the basic formula. So as you guys know, uh, every data sheet comes with an HFE, which is the gain to the current. So the formula for this is beta is equal to the current of the collector divided by the current of the base. So if you want to solve, basic algebra will tell you that if you want to solve for the current in the collector, which is what we're interested in, it is beta multiplied by the current of the base and that should equal the current in the collector so we usually know beta and we can always solve for the current on the beagle bone side which is the base so let's say we choose a one kilo ohm resistor and we have 3.3 .3 volts because that's what the output for the beagle bone is so the current is 3.033 which is 3.3 milliamps so that being said we now know we we know the HFE let's assume in this case it's 313 which is uh, what we'll be using for our transistor we're going to use for the example so given this we can solve for uh, the current in the collector So this should equal uh, 1.0296 amps. So this is the maximum current right here. So as long as your design does not exceed this current right here. Uh, well, actually, this is the maximum current that it comes out through the collector. So this is the, the circuit, how this should work for an NPN, of course. So this is a negative NPN. So this should be, by the way, so this is a LED, so this requires a resistor right here. So that being said, you have the base collector and emitter. So the collector connects to the end of the LED, which is the negative, by the way. And then this connects to the reference voltage. Everything is connected to reference in order for the transistor to work so we'll put this on the breadboard so you guys can see it but the grounds are all connected together no matter what the voltage source is so this is 3.3 volts and you're going to put uh, 12 volts right here which I'm going to be using for the example uh, the 12 volts and the 3.3 volts both connect to the common ground so let's go ahead and work this out and put it on the breadboard so this is the circuit on the breadboard right here. We got uh, the grounds all connected together. This is a 12 volt power supply that I have coming in. This is the positive and this is the negative. This goes to the, the positive goes to the fan because remember we're only controlling the negative with this NPN transistor. So <clears throat> that also means that the 12 volt ground comes this way into the emitter pin then the collector pin goes to the ground of the fan that we're going to be using for this demonstration so then the base pin goes to a resistor value which we have already defined and this one I have set it to 1.5k and then the pin I mean the output I mean the the is connects to the base of the the beagle bone and we're going to be connecting it through a multimeter to measure the current okay let's go ahead and get started with this so I've pulled up a chart right here that I have from the BeagleBone Black P9 header this came from Derek Molley's website I'll also have this in the description and it's been in my other video so the first thing you're gonna do is access your BeagleBone through SSH and to do that, you SSH Ubuntu at 192.168.2. I mean, .7.2.
So again, that's 192.168.7.2. Okay. That, that is only if you're doing it over USB. I'm sorry. Okay. So I am running Ubuntu on this BeagleBone, and I will show you guys a video on how to do that later. But I'm using CYGWIN, so let's just... I've already SHDH'd into it, and something else you guys need to do is make sure you are a root user. To do that in the Ubuntu system, type sudo-i, it'll ask you for your password, and if you're using Ubuntu, it's temp pwd, all one word, t-e-m-p pwd. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Navigate to the directory, sys, class, gpio which stands for general purpose input output and if you list this directory you'll notice there is a set of files an export an unexport and the GPIO chips so what you're gonna do here is go ahead and export one chip I mean uh, one GPIO pin to use and that is actually given by this chart I have in the back so today we're going to be using pin 30 on the BeagleBone it is GPIO 316 and the uh, calculation for that was 112 with 112 so that is the number we're going to type here so go ahead and type echo 112 into that's what that little symbol is by the way it writes it to the, f the file and we're gonna call it export Okay, so we relist the directory. You'll notice there is a new file in there called GPIO112. Go ahead and navigate into that directory, and we'll list it. There are three important values here: active low, direction, and value. Let's go ahead and cat uh, active low first. That is zero, so that's what we want. Well, we'll check right now with, if that's what we want. We'll go ahead and cat direction, and it is currently an input. We're going to go ahead and set it up as an output by echoing out in quotations to direction. So it's pretty simple. Now if we re uh, relist that, you'll see it is now an output. And we'll go ahead and cat the value as of right now we have it set to zero so let's go ahead and turn that to a one echo a one into value now if we recat that you should have a one that went ahead and put voltage on the output to pin 30 so let's go ahead and hook up our multimeter to test if it's gonna work make sure you go ahead and set it to the correct placement so as soon as I connect them we should get a current but before I do that let me go ahead and show you the calculations for the 1.5 ohm resistor because as you can tell we did the calculations for the 1k so the HFE for this one is roughly 310 the resistance now is 1.5k so if you multiply those two together, uh, we'll solve for current first, so 3.3 .3 divided by 1.5k is 2.2. Multiply those two, we'll get 0.682 amps. Um, my motor that we're going to be using for this example is 40, uh, 40 amps, 0.40 40 amps, which falls below this range right here. So let's go ahead and do this and hopefully the amount of current we consume is as we calculated 2.2 milliamps so let me go ahead and put it to 20 unfused and as you can see the fan is working so if I go ahead and echo a zero to value I should turn it off so see if you can hear it turn off I have a zero I'm gonna press enter it turns it off okay so I seem to have blown my fuse on my <laughs> my multimeter but I had a spare one 
So now we can test this out. I'm going to go ahead and echo A1 here to go ahead and see if, how much current we're using. There you go. We're actually using less than we predicted. We're using one, let me get a good view here, 1.6 milliamps. That thing is noisy. Okay. Yeah, we're using 1.6 milliamps. And what did we predict? We predicted 2.2, .2, so <coughs> I think as long as we fall below the, the rating there, we'll be good. Now, what happens when we disconnect our little fan here? Let's test this out, see if the multimeter changes, which means we are still drawing the 1.6 milliamps. Our calculations were pretty far off, but I believe that has to do with the transistor rating here. So, let's plug that back in, see? So there you go. Doesn't matter what the what this is transferring, one amp, two amps, the current should stay the same then. So that's how you connect a transistor to your beagle bone. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Comment your questions. Comment anything you liked or didn't like about the video. Just let me know guys.